Hi guys, my name is Maxim Cheminat and welcome on the Dan YouTube channel. Today I'm going to bring you into a place which is very close to mine because I do work here, which is the Kotao's Diving Hyperbaric Chamber. So let's just not wait too long and I'm going to bring you there and show you how it works and making you a little bit of a visit inside of it. Ready? Okay, let's go. What you have behind me is a hyperbaric chamber. This model is a diver's recompression chamber manufactured by Dixie in 1965 at Baltimore. It has been used ever since by different companies, the US Navy, etc, etc. And I'm now standing where the operator is operating the machine. This chamber is a multi-lock, multi-place chamber, meaning that you can have multiple people in there and different compartments independent from one another. The main lock, which is behind me here, and the entry lock that is here that can be used as a SAS or just to pass on food, people, medication, and whatever can be needed for treatment. This hyperbaric chamber is filled with air. The oxygen that is needed for treatment is given through bibs or a built-in breathing system that the person is gonna breathe in directly through a mask. The operator can hear, see the air level of the bank behind, uh, making sure that there is always enough air for the chamber to work. The oxygen, the pressure of the oxygen over here, and also very important, the depth gauge. This depth gauge is written in feet because obviously we use the US Navy diving tables and everything is in feet. And also it is extremely accurate. Every single of those graduations are one foot division and they are accurate of a quarter of a percent. Absolutely insane accuracy. Obviously, because we do have two different area, we do have two different depth gauge as both of those area might be in a different pressure. In here, we have a camera where the operator here can see what is going on in there even if there was a loss of light, because those cameras are very sensitive to low light, they can obviously speak to the inside of the compartment or also use sound phone in case we do have loss of power. It happens quite often in Thailand. They can still see each other and hear each other. The minimum amount of people that are actually required for treatment are obviously a doctor, because this is a medical procedure that needs to be supervised by a doctor, a supervisor from the chamber, an operator and a tender. The operator obviously operate the machine. The supervisor is here to make sure everything goes smoothly and the tender is doing the entire treatment inside the machine with the patient. Okay, now that I explained to you how the outside work and a bit of the control panel, let's go inside and feel how it feels to be a patient or a tender in a hyperbaric chamber. So to go inside is very easy. It's like a bit like a submarine. Okay. We're going in there, are we? Like, like here, I'm um, in the entry lock, which is the first lock we have. This is a very, very tiny narrow space. Uh, this is not really meant to be used as a place for people, but people may have to go in there in case of problems or if we needed to have a second tender coming or a doctor coming inside. Um, this is why this space will be used. Now on to the main lock. Oh my God, this is very tiny. There we go. How does this work? Very easily, actually. The pipe behind me brings air in the chamber. This pipe removes air from the chamber, all of it being controlled obviously by the operator. Although we have control inside in case something would go wrong, the tender that is sitting here with the patient continuously could be um, could take care of turning off or on something in case something outside is going wrong. When the operator opens the air, the tender closes the door and this door, this very thick door, creates a seal that is actually going to increase the pressure here. Like this, there is never a lock or something to twist like we can see in the movies, but, um, but just pressure maintains the system together. If there was a loss of pressure, Obviously, this wouldn't be hermetic and we couldn't go diving. Behind me, what you can see here is the patient bank with the bib system 
that we talked about earlier. This is where the oxygen comes from and also evacuated from the chamber when people are breathing in it. Patient will be laying down here for a duration of three to sometimes six, seven, eight hours, depending on the treatment table they have, the severity of their injuries, and obviously the doctor's notice. Luckily, even though we may have to spend five to six hours here, we do have a small entertainment system. In here, you can see through the window, there is a projector. And back here on this sheet, you can see, you can put, you can put through the system there and act as a cinema screen, which means that you are not just sitting and looking at each other forever um, during five to six hours, but you actually can watch something just to distract your mind. So as you can see on my face, I'm very, very, very hot in here. Uh, it, the temperature is currently 31 degree, which was 26 when I entered. It's very, very hot. So I'm gonna have to go out and get a bit of a fresh air. I hope you like this episode. And if you have any question about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, how do we treat divers or anything else like this, please do not hesitate to put it down in the, in the comment section. I will be more than happy to answer them. And obviously, if I cannot answer them, Dan, we have amazing doctors here that can definitely answer your question. I hope you liked it and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.